It's like, you oh, know, yeah. you were, you're were right. We were, we were proud that we only slept two hours the night before and we're still going, you know? And, um, and it's, it's interesting that you bring up sleep as the example, because it's the number one recommend lifestyle recommendation that I give to my patients. Um, not only to, to, uh, have healthier hormone levels, but to, uh, um, to give them more energy during the day and to lose weight is to sleep more. Um, I, I think that we suffer from chronic lack of sleep, chronic lack of quality sleep, you know, overuse of sleep aids and, um, and, and, um, you know, so, so I try my very best to get a minimum of eight hours per night, you know, um, I'm a frequent napper. I love napping. As soon as I get home from work every day, I take a nice half hour nap before my evening starts. It sort of recharges me. How good for um, you. So I yes, always yes, encourage my patients. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know that being in Spain, of course, right? So yeah, it's, um, yeah. I need to. You know, I need to you to do it more now that we. My wife and I actually. You asked me how how I was doing, and actually personally, I didn't mention we have a new arrival. We have a. Uh, um, Despite my advanced age, uh, we were able to uh, to conceive a beautiful uh, young boy after some trials and tribulations. But uh, we did it all naturally, and um, it's uh, wonderful. But it is a challenge for the sleep, and I'm availing of the siesta just about every day. So, yeah. Well, felicidades. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Very nice. So, are you are you bilingual yourself? No, I, no? I, I took some high school Spanish, so I know congratulations. Is yeah, well, you've got, you've got the, the right rhythm there, even if you don't have, you know, you can, you can work with that. So, uh, that's a, hey, there's a, there's a lot of, pra, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, big market there in the upper, upper class of Latin America. So uh, maybe it's worth thinking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've spent a fair amount of time in South America, too, so it's... Um, it's and then Spanish is such a beautiful language, so I, I know enough to get myself a hotel room or a cab or something. Oh, yeah, you know? <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, I do have some doctor friends and some healthcare friends in Argentina and in Brazil. If you ever need any contacts, you probably can, you know, thank you, may you. Not, but uh, in any case, okay, well, let's ju let's circle back to age management and um, maybe we can dig into there's so many things I know we could go on and on. But there seems to be such a, um, a crescendo of interest in um, the um, in hormone, you know, hormone optimization, both on the the clinical side as well as the lifestyle side. And I know that's we've been talking uh, about different areas. What would it? What would you look at when let's for someone who comes into your clinic? Um, I know some of the things that uh, that I've tested um, when I'm when I'm working with customers of mine and my wellness practice is that uh, we look at total testosterone, we look at free testosterone, we look at cortisol, insulin, we look at uh, fasting blood sugar level, we look at C-reactive proteins, we look yes. at um, the, maybe the strat, um, oh, I'm, I'm going to botch this one, but this, the stradiol. Um, to estradiol. Estradiol, yep. yeah. I'm, I'm looking at these in Spanish, and so I'm trying to, to translate. <laughs> but anyway, um, are belong or would you do you look at those or some other things or um, we do yeah so there are you know there are, there are literally hundreds of hormones you know in the body in there but there are um, there are uh, key ones that we can actually um, administer and prescribe to patients um, that are sort of the big ones that we look at you've named a good number of them actually we look at so we'll look at luteinizing hormone, which is a pituitary hormone that stimulates ovulation in women. It stimulates testicular production of testosterone in men. So we see kind of what the pituitary axis is doing. Um, we look at uh, something called an IGF-1 level, which is a, a, a good way to measure the level of growth, human growth hormone in the body. Um, we look at total and free testosterone levels in both men and women. We look at estrogen levels or estradiol, which is the, the, the most abundant estrogen in both men and women. Um, we look at progesterone in women. We look at... Um, Vitamin D levels are 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels, which is actually vitamin D is, is a, it's, it's a hormone actually more than it is a, a vitamin. Um, we look at DHEA, DHEA and cortisol, which are adrenal hormones. Um, 
trying to think if I'm co- and we look at a, a uh, we look at thyroid hormones as well, both um, TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, um, T4, which is the less active form of thyroid hormone, and T3, which is the most active form of thyroid hormone in the body. It's actually the form. It's actually T3 is is the is the is the one that actually is doing the work that thyroid does. So that's a very key one to look at. And most traditional Western doctors, even endocrinologists, don't look at free T3 levels. The in, one of the interesting things, um, and this is where a lot of, uh, of Western doctors fall, fall short in their in their knowledge of hormones, is that you can is that they will look at the, the levels of their hormones in their patients, and they'll fall within the normal range. Okay, for the, whatever the lab is considering to be the normal range. Well, one of the things that happens as as people get older is that they have something called receptor level um, resistance to the hormones, right? So just like insulin resistance is, is one that we know of and doctors actually address. It means that, you you know, if you have insulin resistance, it's you're on your way to becoming a type 2 diabetic and you need your body needs more and more insulin to actually tickle the receptor to do the work that insulin needs to do, okay? Well, the same thing goes for thyroid hormone. The same thing goes for testosterone. You can have perfectly normal or even high thyroid levels, even free T3, which is the most active form of thyroid level in your body, but you have resistance on a receptor level, so you may need two or three times the amount that the average person needs to get the same job done. That's okay? that is that's fascinating. I. I think that's certainly not well known at all. I know we do talk a lot about, um, you know, insulin resistance, but uh, what you're saying is we need to look at, we can have resistance to any type of hormone. Exactly. So if you think, you know, it's, you know, you think of somebody knocking on a door. Well, if they're lightly tapping, there's nobody going to answer the door, right? So you sometimes need to bang on the door to get somebody to open it. The same thing goes with hormones. Sometimes you need to really bombard a cell with hormones in order for it to to actually say, oh, there's there's thyroid hormone here. Let's actually transcribe this, you know, to, to, you know, transcript the DNA to actually do the you know, do the work that the hormones meant to do. In, in the case of thyroid, it's to increase our metabolism and facilitate um, weight loss and increase energy levels and, and regulate heart rate and body temperature and things like that. And so you have people that are even taking doses of, of thyroid hormone, you know, that are pretty high and they're not getting clinical results, you know. And, um, and you know, doctors freak out because they, see, you know, most doctors freak out when they see something that's outside of the normal range. But, but some people just need something that is 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 at a higher level for them to get the job done. So it's kind of a bell curve, perhaps. You've got the the outliers on both sides. Is that would that be fair to say? Yeah, yeah, and 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 it's even skewed toward because as most of us get older, we have we have receptor level resistance. You know, our body just is not as robust in its response to the hormones, and so we need more as we get older. Right. Oh, that's yeah. That is fascinating. Yeah, I've been exp- um, doing a lot of um, well, not a lot of but weekly. I I do a um, um, some a twenty four hour or, an, or at least an eighteen hour fast, and uh, that's has seemingly uh, been a nice way to, to kind of jumpstart my looking at how I, how I, a lot of my energy, my uh, just looking at, uh, at uh, without measuring testosterone, you know, just looking at, uh, at the wake up signs, if we'll leave it at that. And uh, that's yep. been very helpful. So despite the lack of sleep, um, which definitely is, is a major, a major uh, impact. So I know we're. I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, I know we're. Yeah, of course. I'm. I'm curious. I have a question. How has the experience of fasting been for you? You know, it was. It was. Uh, I had a mental uh, block because I can't. You know, I used to be really deeply into sports and doing triathlons and even uh, things like that. And, and the old idea that we had to and had to eat every three hours and all that. So despite uh-huh. going the other way, you know, I'm very much into sort of a paleo plan with um, cycling the, cycling the, uh, the carbs using low, low glycemic index carbs in, 